Hi everyone, this is Sean Esmail from the Cloud Ranger and you're viewing the Microsoft Azure training. Today is the part two of the Azure Virtual Machines and uh, we are going to create virtual machines in this session basically. Um, we have been doing so in the last few sessions, um, but I felt that we need one formal session where we actually have one self-contained uh, tutorial of creating these virtual machines. Now, we are going to have a couple of sessions on creating virtual machines. The session today is going to use the management portal to create virtual machines, and we'll get into some advanced concepts and a uh, couple of things that we have always uh, done, but almost um, overlooked it when we were um, doing other sessions for other topics that we are covering. But we are going to get into some more details as we use the uh, UI or the user interface in the management portal to create this. Okay, so let's get started. So in today's session, we're going to cover a few things. And the first thing we are going to do is quick create a virtual machine. So as you will see in quick create, uh, what will happen is that there's not a whole lot of configuration material that can be put in there while creating the virtual machine. Then we are going to create a VM from gallery. So we will be going to a gallery, as you have noticed before, and pretty much pick up one of the images and create a virtual machine from that image. Um, we are going to touch a little bit on Azure VHD storage. Um, storage is something we have not talked about before, storage accounts and all that. Um, we do have a lot of sessions coming up on storage in Azure itself, but we are going to touch enough of a storage uh, today to ensure that we understand when we create a virtual machine where the virtual machines the VHDs or the data disks, VHDs are stored. And part of the demonstration will also have that we will attach a data disk to an existing virtual machine. So we'll manipulate the storage and do some stuff there as well. And the last thing we'll do is we are going to create a new virtual machine from an existing OS disk. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well from the Magic interface. So Let's get started. There's not a whole lot of concepts we're going to talk about. This is going to be a very hands-on session. So I'm going to go to our client computer and go to the management portal. So here I'm on my client computer. As you can see, I'm in my subscription, Cloud Ranger blog at hotmail.com. You will be in your session at this point. There's everything is at zero. There's nothing. It's a clean slate. There's nothing there except the default directory. So the way we create virtual machines, I know for some of you, this might be a little repetitive, but you know, for people who are just viewing this video, it's going to be self-contained. So we are going to start from scratch. So to create a virtual machine, we'll go to virtual machines, or we can just go to new and go to, it's a compute service. So we'll go to compute and we'll go to virtual machine and we can create from here. So these are the two methods we we talked about that one is going to be a quick create of virtual machine and another will be from the gallery. Okay, so usually what I like doing is coming to virtual machine here, and here, as you can see, there's no virtual machines have been created. Notice over here, you can click the create virtual machine here for the first one or new here as well. The good part about clicking this first is when you click on new, it actually goes to compute virtual machine and it already takes you to the little uh, menu here where it's asking for you uh, to you know, to choose the uh, right uh, option from the virtual machine. So I like doing that all the time. So uh, I don't have to go and dig in in the menu and try to look for something. So we create a virtual machine, create new. The first one is quick create. In quick create, this is all the options that you get. So basically what it's looking for is a DNS name or the cloud service name. And for our one, we'll do C Ranger VM001. And as you can see, this is a public DNS for the cloud service. So it is uh, giving a little checkbox here saying that, hey, this name is available. Okay. So this again goes back to the concept video we had uh, in the previous session that, you know, you have to have a cloud service for a virtual machine to be placed in. So without a cloud service, you cannot do anything. So at this point, it's actually taking your cloud service information. Then you need to choose an image. So these are all the images that are provided to you out of the box from Azure. So these images are already there. So what we usually have been picking up from here is Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center. But obviously you can see there are much more Windows Server uh, images here. There's a bunch of Linux ones here. 
and you can click on more images and you can go and actually see a lot more image to pick from here as well. So for our case here, I'm going to just, uh, and obviously that takes me off completely. So let's go to create, create here. C Ranger VM001, I'm going to leave this at this. And we're going to just pick the data center one from here. Oops. Leave it as it is. And these are all the instance sizes. So we have talked about instance sizes once again in our previous video. And um, I'm not going to go into too much details of this here as well. But if you need more information, please go and watch the previous session uh, in this training series to get the details. So here, what we are going to do is pick something standard. I want to go for an A3, which will give me four core and seven gigs of memory. And this is going to be uh, all the configuration options that you're going to get in Quick Create. And now we are going to talk about the virtual machine uh, specific information. So it's since this is going to be a standalone virtual machine starting out, it's just asking for the local uh, administrator name and the password and that's all we can provide over here in region and affinity this is the location so you it wants to know which data center you're going to place this in and I'm going to choose the East US 2 region this is the closest to me so you can pick the region you are in um, and that's about it when it comes to quick create it's not going to give you any more options um, it's not going to uh, give you enough choices to make where do you want to store it uh, and you know if you want anything else like the endpoints and all to be configured with a virtual machine there's not a whole lot of things it will ask you and that's and this is the reason it's called quick create because you quickly cre want to create a virtual machine this works perfectly fine um, when you are trying to do some lab work or you need a virtual machine. For example, the kind of demonstration I'm doing right now, we could have completely done this in Quick Create because I'm basically just trying to create a virtual machine and that's about it. Um, uh, don't get me wrong, it has everything every other virtual machine will have. Um, you'll be able to RDP into it. There are endpoints configured for you. Um, you have all the VIP, DIPs, and all the IP addresses that will be given to you. It's a full-fledged virtual machine. It's just that while creating, it does not give you enough options. Okay, so this takes a little while, as you already remember from my other videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video at this point and let this finish up, and we will come back when the virtual machine is up and running. Alrighty, took a while to create this virtual machine, but that's okay. So let's do this. So now that virtual machine is created, C Ranger VM001, you can see one virtual machine. Um, there are a couple of things I want to go over right now. One, you already know that there was a cloud service that was created with the same name, and uh, just because we did not have the option to change it. And this C Ranger VM001 is placed in this cloud service. I want to introduce a little bit about the storage at this point. Um, we can see over here it says storage zero. That's because sometimes the management portal does not reflect uh, the current changes unless it's refreshed. So let's refresh this real quick. Okay, and as soon as I did that, you can see that there is some something in the storage. What in the back end happened was that there was a storage account that was created. So this is portal VHD, SK, whatever character alphanumeric characters over here that was placed at the storage name. When you click on this, you can see a bunch of options here, and the one we are interested in is the containers. So in containers, there was a container or a folder created called VHDs. And when you click on this VHDs folder, you can see that there are two files that are created. One is the status. We are not going to be caring so much about this one, but this is the one we are interested in, which is .vhd. So this .vhd file was placed under this VHDs folder or the container as, as as your calls it, and that's actually the virtual machine file. 
okay this is no different from your on-premises where your virtual machine will have a VHD file uh, created on a SAN or a DAS or local storage or whatever so this is where it is located and it's all placed under storage and this is done for us in the back end uh, when we created the virtual machine so just remember that so if we create another virtual machine over here we'll see that it will create a new storage account over here and it will start putting things in there um, in the future or when we do powershell we will show i mean i'll get into some stuff where we will uh, create the storage location ourselves and start putting the VHDs uh, in there. In, in production, you probably want to do something a little bit more structured, right? So you'd, you'd probably have one account with a VHD folder in there with all VHDs located in some sort of an hierarchy or you know different folders. And you have to make sure it's a little bit structured. But I just wanted to make sure that you understand that uh, while we are creating this virtual machine. So we have gone through the quick create of virtual machine and this time the second virtual machine we are going to create is going to be created from the gallery. So we are going to use an existing image that Azure provides us and creates for us. And this is something we have done mostly uh, for all our previous sessions. So we go over here and this time we choose from gallery. This is the long way of doing it and um, from the gallery actually gives you more options on um, the virtual machine and things you can do. So obviously the first thing you want to do over here is choose an image. This is no different from the quick rate. You also were given the options to choose an image. Um, and we are going to choose the Windows Server 2012 R2 data center. At this point, I want to show over here that there are multiple categories of images. So this is for Microsoft, this is for Ubuntu, CoreOS, CentOS, uh, and Oracle. And these are all Linux ones. And there are some specialized one here as well. You can see with SQL already pre-installed, uh, Visual Studio pre-installed, bunch of things like that. And there's something over here called My Images, which is empty right now. But you can also have custom images that you create on-premise or even on the cloud that you can store here for a rapid deploying and if you know all the basic advantages of having your own image is basically you can easily clone or deploy a virtual machine from that image to save a lot of time right so there is an option for doing this and we'll have a session on this later so let's go back to Microsoft and we are going to choose the Windows Server 2012 R2 data center let's go ahead and click on next and here you can see you are being given virtual machine configuration options so basically once again it's giving you more options to uh, create your virtual machine so the version release date over here is basically uh, a place where they allow you to create uh, i'm pretty much pick uh, the same image but it's an updated image so there might be some patches that have been already applied to these images so far we have always picked the latest one but for whatever reason you might not be okay with uh, this uh, version of that image because you know they might Microsoft might have packed this up with the latest patches you want something from last year December 11th uh, where you know that the patch level was at a certain point and your maybe your custom software is going to break if you do anything new or whatever it's not tested but for our purposes we'll take the latest version looks like there was one recently put over here virtual machine name so let's put c ranger vm002 maybe for this one this is the tier so you the basic or the standard i'm going to pick the standard tier so i get all the standard uh, instance images so i'm going to pick something like a3 just like last time it's going to give me four core cpus and seven gigs of memory for our purposes this is okay and this is the new username which is the local admin account that's used for uh, a standalone windows server let's click on next and as you can see we are giving we have been given more and more options for this virtual machine in production maybe this is the method we will mostly use creating the vm from the gallery just because it gives us more control and more options to go from right so if you remember like our cloud services stuff that at this point we can create a new cloud service or put it put it in an existing cloud service so since we already have one cloud service 
with the previous virtual machine. At this point, we should be able to see that CRanger VM001, this is not the virtual machine, but this is the name of the cloud service or the domain name as Microsoft has started calling it recently. We could have picked this one, right? Just because you can have multiple virtual machines in one cloud service. For our purpose, we'll say no, we will just go through a new cloud service and we are going to name it CRanger VM002. You could really name anything else. Once again, a rehash, your virtual machine name and the cloud service name does not have to be the same. You could have just called this like web.cloudapp.net. But chances are, since this is going to be public DNS, if you do web, it's probably not going to be available because somebody probably already took it. So you, it's like a domain name. You need to make sure that it's something unique, right? So for us, we'll just leave this at C Ranger VM002, same as our virtual machine, easy to find. This is the location where we are going to pick the region affinity group or virtual network. I'm not going to talk about affinity groups because this is something that's going to be deprecated very soon and it's going to be phased out. But this is where we would pick also the virtual network if we had one created. And in our previous sessions, we have gone through a lot of that. So feel free to look into that if you want to create your virtual machine already placed into a virtual network. For us, we don't have a virtual network created, so I'm going to just place this in East US2 storage account. Same with your storage account. You remember when we created the previous virtual machine, it randomly created a storage account. You can use the same storage account to store multiple VHDs. And you know, in fact, in production, that's probably what you want to do. You'll probably keep create a storage account by itself and leave it there. And then you'll come at this point and every time you create a new virtual machine, you'll pick that storage account. For our purpose, we'll say, you know what, let's keep this all separately. So use an automatically generated storage account and keep it that way. Availability set, I'm not going to get into this at this point. We're going to leave this alone. And as you can see, there are two endpoints, which are the standard words that are created um, for the RDP and the PowerShell. We're going to leave this here and click on next. So a bunch of new things will come up here at this point as well. Uh, the first thing is the virtual machine configuration. And, you know, by default, the VM agent is always checked over here. And, you know, what the VM agent does is that it helps, uh, you know, push these extensions or manage these extensions while we create the virtual machine. And we are going to talk about these extensions later. These are different extensions that you can put uh, while creating a virtual machine. Like for example, you want the Microsoft anti-malware or semantic endpoint protection or train micro installed while the, the image is being provisioned. So we're going to leave it as it is right now. We're not going to touch this all stuff. We're going to just make sure that we have the agent installed and that's about it. So these were all the options that were given to us when we create a virtual machine from an image. Obviously, the difference between a quick create VM and a create VM from gallery is that gallery gives you more options to pick from. And in our case, it probably didn't matter because we did not have a lot of things created. But when we are going to do this in production, um, this is the way you want to go because by then you probably already have a cloud service created and planned. You probably already have a storage account created and planned. Um, and then you have a virtual network, which is already like a designed architect properly and you want to place the new virtual machine in there. So at this point, this is the only way that will allow you to pick those options while you create the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and click this checkbox here so it starts creating. And once again, we'll pause the video and get back when everything is uh, already set up. And I'm going to start showing you that time um, where Azure went and started placing all this information. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause the video. Okay, our virtual machine has been created. And a couple of things I want to show right now. Let's go ahead to the cloud services. As we can see, there are two cloud services here. Our storage account, once again, has not updated. So let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, and we can see that uh, Microsoft has, or does your portal has chosen to keep the same storage over here. Let's go to the account and go to the containers. So far, so good. And here at this point, you can see that both the VHDs were placed under the same account in the same folder. So C Ranger VM001, this was the one we already had, and this is the one it placed here as well. And it's under the same account. 
So let's go back. It's under the same account here. Um, now let's go ahead and get into some details about this virtual machine. Since this both are the same, I'll just pick the first one and let's go in there. I want to show that here you can see in the dashboard the status of the virtual machine. You can see the size we had picked, the internal IP address, the DIP, the VIP address for the cloud uh, service, host name, the DNS name, RDP certificate, where it was located, subscription it's under. We can see that there was a compute.bg-info plugin that was uh, extension that was installed here. Uh, this is the OS disk. This is the same name we saw in storage. There were four cores. And there are some options here that we have not looked into before. Uh, this we have looked into, obviously, the endpoints that were created in Quick VM. These two are by default created once again. And, you know, you're not giving an option, but you can see that. Here under configure, you can see your virtual machine size. And obviously, it shows you that you can change this, right? You can change the sizes as well. Put it in an availability set. Uh, monitoring locations, we are not going to touch all of that. But this is a basic information you can get about the virtual machine. A uh, little bit of a nice fancy dashboard. Um, yeah. The other way to look into this information is actually from PowerShell. I know we are not going to get so much into PowerShell in this session, but I'm going to just show you a couple of things. If we do get Azure VM, you can see the virtual machines that are there. So there are two virtual machines we know. The name is the one of the host name, CRanger VM1 and 002. The service name is the cloud service, so CRanger VM001 or 002. Um, if you want some specific uh, information, then you can do CRanger this one. Uh, you can go by service name or you can go by name, which is the virtual machine name. You can do CRanger VM002, for example. And obviously, it's going to ask for the service name, CRanger VM002 as well. And what you can see is that uh, it gives you some information about the virtual machine that we have looked into the UI in this location, for example. So it's right here. Okay, so that's how you get some information about your virtual machine. Um, the other thing, let's actually RDP or connect to a virtual machine. The best way to, let's go to the second one. For, um, if we want to connect to the virtual machine, click on connect. It downloads the RDP file. You click open and you are ready to go with the account you have created earlier we just use that and we click ok and we have done this plenty of times before so this is not a big deal we're going to just create click on this and wait for the rdp session to plug in okay we are logged into virtual machine and the server manager pops up let's close this here um this is the part I wanted to show you. Let's go over here. So in here, you could see that there was an extension that was installed by default, which was the BG info, the background info. And this is basically it, right? This is the one, uh, all this information that comes is because of that extension that was installed. That's a nice little sweet way of showing, uh, you know, how uh, the information of this virtual machine. So if you're logging into multiple machines, uh, this is a decent thing to have. And while the image was being provisioned, it is uh, that extension was provisioned for us as well. The thing that uh, I want to do, the reason I'm talking about this is that there are multiple other extensions that we can actually provision while the virtual machine is being provisioned. Uh, and this is something we'll look into later when we talk about extensions, but that VM agent option was there to do this. Um, once again, by default, when we go to the Explorer here, you can see there's a C drive, 127 gigs of data, and uh, I mean, of the OS disk, and there's a temporary storage where we do not want to store anything that we want to keep. It's basically just a temporary storage that Microsoft creates for you. Um, a lot of our people I come across, they will ask me if this can be changed from a D drive to any other drive. Uh, because a lot of people seem to have D drive as the data drive or data disk for whatever reason. So yes, that can be done. There are ways to actually change it. It's no different from changing the uh, the disk label. So you could change this, change this to X or Y or whatever and keep your, attach another data disk and put it as a D drive. 
Okay, so that's all the information I wanted to show over here on these two drives. Uh, let me see, is there anything else we want at this point? No, not really. So let's minimize here, and I'm going to go to the next thing we want to talk about, which is the data disks. So C Ranger VM002 right now, if you come over here, has just the OS disk and it has the temporary disk. So this is the OS disk and this is the temporary disk. What if we wanted to attach additional disk to this OS for whatever reason, right? For a SQL server maybe, or SharePoint or Exchange, you need a separate data disk to put your data in there. Sure, we can do that. The easiest way to do this is actually to click on this attach. When you click on this attach, it asks you that if you want to attach an empty disk. Absolutely. And it gives you some options that where do you want to store this? So this is the virtual machine and this is the storage location. So you can see it is our storage account that was created, blob, core, windows, net, and under VHDs folder. Sure. And it's asking that what do you want the file name to be? So usually what we can do is we can keep the VM's name because we want to make sure that we can identify disk, this, this VHD or this disk when the entire folder VHDs show up, right? And it's asking for the size. Uh, let's make something for 10 gigs. There's a host cache preference. Uh, you can read about it. Um, ideally, you don't have to choose anything over here. You can select none for default. Um, it's already on by default for both the read and write operations we can do on the disk. So let's leave it like that. But we know that this is where the disk is going to be stored. This is the most important part. And we have no issues uh, storing this over here unless you want to create a separate account. So click OK and you can see that it's going to attach the disk. It does not take too long at all to actually attach this disk. So uh, you can see it says attaching an empty disk to the virtual machine. Um, let's see. Okay, took about a minute. <laughs> okay, so let's click OK here and let's go to the storage, go to our one account, go to the containers. I want to show you where it was stored. And rightfully so, see Ranger VM002 data disk one VHD. So any disk we attach is basically attaching a VHD, kind of like the on-premise stuff we have been doing all along, right? So this is not a big deal. But when we come to see Ranger VM2, it's not here. And you know what? Some of you virtualization guys already probably have figured out. We have to go to disk management. And it's going to most likely discovered that and yes it has discovered the disk because we attached it there so it's it's sort of uh, popping up or it's sort of um, lack of words here it's sort of uh, providing itself to the operating system so let's click on that we're not going to spend too much time here we can see that the 10 gigs it's unallocated absolutely right it's raw storage so let's click a simple volume click next Next, eh, let's keep it in F, no big deal. Uh, volume level, let's put it something like data. Perform quick format. Don't forget that, quick format. And what we will have very soon is, let's cancel that. It's asking for a format again. Come on now. time formatting. Eh. Okay, data F. So as you can see, we have 10 gigs of a data disk. And this is how you create a data disk. And do not forget, like I mentioned before, that this is a 10 gig disk, but it will only be built or charged for the amount of data that's actually stored in here. Okay, so that's all there is to this one. I am going to go through one more thing that's actually deleting a virtual machine. How do you delete a virtual machine? A couple of things. Let's delete the C Ranger VM002. Okay, so let's get out of this RDP session. And the way you delete it is you come over here, click on delete. You're giving two options. The first option is that do you want to delete the attached disks? In our case, it will be the OS as well as the data disks, or you want to keep the attached disk and only delete the virtual machine. Once again, like regular virtualization in Hyper-V or VMware, this is 
pretty obvious that do you want to keep the VHD files or not? That's what it comes down to. For our case, we don't want anything to do with this VM left behind, which means delete attached disks as well. So we'll take this one for C Ranger VM002. Delete attached disks. It's actually telling you that these are the two uh, disks that are going to be deleted. Uh, okay, so we'll click yes and we'll wait for this virtual machine to be deleted. Okay, all deleted. Now, most of the things are clear up except a couple of things. The first thing, obviously, you can see over here, the cloud services, it's left behind. So we'll have to delete this manually. Doesn't take too long for the storage. Let's view that. Containers. VHDs, and we can see that those stuff are gone except that 001 status file. Just a status file. Let's go click on that. Delete. Make sure the name catches up, right? C Ranger VM001. And let's see. I mean, sorry. I think I deleted the wrong one here. Yeah, we should have deleted the 002. Anyways, this is the file we should have deleted. That's what exactly happens when you don't pay, don't pay attention. Let's click on OK. Our C Ranger VM001 VHD is here. That's fine. The status file is back. Good. So we have cleaned everything from here for C Ranger VM002, and there's nothing there. Okay, let's see what else is left to cover. So in our storage, we can see this is the container, and this is the VHDs, and this is our OS disk. Right, C Ranger VM001, this is what the operating system is and everything is. Okay, I'm going to show our last thing for today. Let's go to the virtual machines. I'm going to delete this virtual machine just like VM002 we had deleted, but this time I'm going to keep the attached disks. So it's only going to create delete the virtual machines, but the attached disks and their VHD files will not be deleted from the storage account. Okay. So let's delete this virtual machine and keep that stuff behind. Okay, that did not take too long. Delete virtual machine 001. As you can see, virtual machine zero, no virtual machines have been created. Cloud service, yeah, it's going to be left behind. So let's go ahead and delete that. And in storage, we're going to come over here and we'll see under the container, the VHDs is still there. And we can see the VHD file is still there. Okay. This is what we are going to do. We are going to go create a new virtual machine. And this time when we create the virtual machine, it's going to be from the gallery. We are going to choose the, I mean, here at this point, we would have gone and chosen the uh, image. And what we are going to do is that we are not going to choose the image. What we are going to go and do is go to my disks. And it has not shown up yet. Since it has not shown up, let's cross this and go refresh this portal. And it happens, you know, I'm, I'm noticing this quite frequently these days that, you know, the information does not show up because it has not refreshed and gotten that information. So let's try this once again, create the virtual machine, go to from gallery, and in the choose remote, go to my disks. Ah, as you can see, it has shown up. So my disks usually will not have everything, but just because that OS disk was not deleted, what we are trying to do right now is create a new virtual machine based on that VHD. This is similar to in Hyper-V when you try to go create a virtual machine and it, it asks you what to put the VHD or what VHD you want. You can choose that information saying that you have an existing VHD that you want to attach to the virtual machine. And this VHD is already configured, for example. So we know the C Ranger VM001 was already created for us. When we deleted it, we left the disk behind. All we are doing right now is creating a new virtual machine with that disk. 
and this disk is similar similar to what we had in the storage not similar this is the disk we had in the storage right so if you pick on that and click on next you can see that you are not going to get a whole lot of information over here because it's it's basically telling you that let's do cranger vm005 for example it's not giving you a lot of information to choose from because those information were already there when we created the virtual machine like the storage and everything else these are all the new stuff that you can do with the new virtual machine for example you can put it on a different region uh, or you can have the virtual network that is there but since the storage is already on east us2 you can see that it's not letting us move here because the storage the virtual machine is going to be created where the storage is located. Um, you can create a new cloud service, obviously, and you click on next. And as usual, it's asking that if you want any other extensions to be um, deployed when the virtual machine is provisioned, we are, going to not, we are going to say no. So the basic thing I was trying to say over here is that you are actually cr creating a new virtual machine and attaching a VHD to the virtual machine with this way. And um, I think this is pretty unique and pretty powerful. If you already have a, well, there are multiple reasons you could delete a virtual machine because you want to give it more resources or you want to provision it in a different way, but you want to keep the same VHD. And the way you do that is from here. So if you went click, click next, you, it would have deployed from there. I'm not going to do that, but that disk is the same as the one over here, right? So you've come to VHDs, you can see it over here. The important thing over here to mention is that my disks over there are my images. You can create your own disk on premises, configure it the way you want it, and you can upload that disk, which will show up in my disks. And we have to use PowerShell to do this, or some of it, and we will definitely do that when we have a separate session where we talk about disks and images and self-provisioning it. and uploading your images to do that. So it's important as well. This storage account can be accessed through API, can be accessed through um, different third-party tools or even from PowerShell so you can upload stuff to this storage container, right? So it's important that you understand that, that you can actually put stuff here, put disks over here or upload VHDs here and create a virtual machine from that VHD. You may require that in some production scenarios where you need to upload a VHD here and do this. Um, one of the, uh, I mean, I have seen this happen more frequently is that um, you already have an on-premise virtual machine that you are trying to deploy to the cloud or you are going to migrate to the cloud, you can basically take the VHD, upload it over here and create the VM and you actually have your virtual machine pretty much migrated to the cloud. That's all you need, right? A VHD. Um, you cannot upload VHDX files over here and you will never see VHDX files over here. If you have a VHDX file, when you upload it, there are commandlets to use to convert it to a VHD. So technically these are like generation one VMs in Hyper-V world and not generation two v, uh, VMs. And um, that's all there is to it. Okay, so I hope you're clear on how to create virtual machines from the UI. Um, our next session is going to be doing similar things, mostly the same things and a little bit more, but using completely PowerShell so you can script this and make this a little bit better. Obviously, when you do something in PowerShell, you have more, uh, you know, you have more options. I mean, you, you can customize things more, uh, but you can, get things in a better way. It's some people prefer it prefer to do that completely in PowerShell. I try to use UI as much as possible and where I can't, I will use PowerShell. But if I have to script something to automate, which we do a lot, I'll use PowerShell. So our next session is going to be based on that. Okay. So I think that's all there is to it for today. Let's go back to our slide. So we have pretty much covered all this. Create quick create a VM, create VM from the gallery. Uh, Azure VHD storage, we talked about a little bit about storage, attach a data disk to an existing virtual machine. We have done that and create a new VM from an existing OS disk. So this is the last thing we did where we kept that OS VHD and we created a new VM uh, to utilize that VHD. And we talked about a little bit of how uploading and everything is done. And that's about it. Okay, that concludes our session and um, I'll be seeing you in our next session, which will be doing similar things and creating uh, VMs using PowerShell. 
As usual, the training site is at cloudranger.net forward slash Azure dash training. YouTube is forward slash Cloud Ranger Network. We are at Twitter, Google Plus, and you can always email me. Um, I'm noticing that more and more people are trying to actually use the comments to ask questions, which is perfect because that helps um, other viewers to actually uh, clarify some of the questions they may have or they may even not have thought about it and it's, they would like to know about it. Um, but still, feel free to email me if you need something or you have a quick question um, and I'll try to reply um, as soon as possible, really. But then again, I really, really hope that you put things in the comments rather than sending emails. And do not forget to like the YouTube videos. All right, guys, so I will see you in the next session. Thank you.